I decided to hook up another board like this with two drivers and two counters on them using one of the other counter chips because I didn't have enough of these. And here it is. Ta-da! It looks very similar. I set it up kind of as a mirror image of this one. I don't know if it works yet. These counter chips are the uh, 192Ns, which are different from the counter chips here, which means they have a different pinout and probably a slightly different operation. But the, the, the same basic concept applies. This one doesn't have a clock input, but it does have an up and a down input that appears to be like a clock. So you just pulse it, either the up one or the down one. And I'm only pu pulsing the up one, of course. And then I have the carry uh, connected to the next chip over. So what I want to do is put this next to this board and then hook the carry on this one up to this digit which should be this counter and then rearrange where the clock actually drives on this board so that I get one gigantic four digit number. Okay, this is kind of funny. I don't have a long enough wire to go from the output on this one to the input on this one. So I'm going to have to uh, take a pit stop on this board over here, I think is how we'll do it. So the carry out on these counter chips, and I need to look at the pinout again, is um, carry out is 12. Pin 12 should be that one, and I'll just hook it. <laughs> this is going to be kind of convoluted. I'll hook it on a random row here, and then, and that's still not long enough. Okay, okay, I'll go all the way over to here with it. I'll go to row 42. It's kind of tight, okay? And then we'll go from 42 to the input on this counter chip, or the clock. Oh, right, so I hooked this one up differently. This one, the clock was synced. I used the enable pin on this one. So I need to, I need to look up the sheet for this chip now because, of course, I don't remember. All right, this is the chip on the other board, the 160N. And what I had done before was I, I remember I had a problem with the, the digits syncing. So instead of connecting to the clock input, I chained from the carry out to the enable P pin. So I'm going to want this to go to enable P, which is pin seven. But that presents a bit of an issue because I don't have a clock here. Now, I wonder if this is going to be problematic or if I should connect the clock input all the way over here to the real clock. I'm not certain. I think I'll try that. I don't know if that's the right approach. This is definitely going to get confusing and hard to follow here. So now, these two are the clock pulse from the timer, from the 555. And on this side, they're driving this, the count. On this side, they're just going to the clock input here for, I guess, synchronization purposes. When we finally get a rollover on the second digit here, that goes this way, jumpers over to here, and enables the counter on this one. When this one rolls over, it enables the count on this one, so that, I think... Okay, we're having some technical problems here. Um, I'm not entirely certain what footage I may have lost because the computer seemed to have froze, and I, was, I lost my video preview. But to recap, this is not counting correctly. This side is not counting correctly. It's skipping digits. And I don't know why. I'm not sure how to debug this, actually. Hmm. Either something's loose, or something here is, dis is connected in improperly, or there's a subtlety uh, in the signaling. Let let's disconnect the carry over one, and it's still doing it. So even without this connected to anything, it's still wrong. Okay. Well, I have down tied to high because I did a, a quick test earlier and it seemed like it didn't count at all unless I did that, but maybe that's wrong. The down clock maybe shouldn't be tied to high or maybe the down clock has to be, you know, does it always have to be an inverted form of whatever the clock pulse is 
or maybe it shouldn't be connected at all when I'm using... No, that doesn't seem right. It seems like it needs to be connected. Well, I'm going to disconnect that, and I'm going to attach a, a little jumper to it so that I can easily change it between high and low and just observe the behavior. Okay, so the down signal, the down clock on this chip is now tied high permanently, which is how it was before. Well, that was interesting. It was blank for a while, and now it came back. That initial blank was strange, but the behavior after that doesn't change. I'm, I'm going to tie the, the down to low now. Oh, wow. Well, that's really wrong there. That's interesting. Why, why does it start sort of wrong for a little while there? I mean, I guess they could have garbage state in them because I'm not clearing them. You know, I don't have a reset circuit yet. I think I hooked up the reset pin and held it in the correct place. Let me check the data sheet. Okay, clear is pin 14 on this counter chip. And it doesn't have a line on it, so it should be active high. And I have it tied low so that it's not clearing. Um, load is pin 11, and that's active low. So I have that tied high so that I don't load. At least that's my assumption there. I think that's the correct understanding because that, that way I leave these input pins empty and blank because I don't, I don't actually care about them. This is VCC. That's, what, that's input A, C, and D. And B is on the other side over here. And that's also disconnected. But I don't think that should matter because the low is not enabled. Or load is not enabled. Down is currently tied high. And up is tied to the clock. And even if we ignore the second digit, the output of this counter is connected to this display chip. But the simple fact remains is that the overflow from here, which goes down this wire, is definitely triggering every five pulses instead of ten. So I'm not certain what's happening here. I'm going to have to read through this data sheet and see if I can find some kind of clue about this. But I don't have high hopes about that because I find these data sheets pretty obtuse. A lot of times I feel like they're written as if you already know exactly what the chip does and how it works. And yet at the same time, it's supposed to be telling you that. I, I don't know. There's like a terminology gap here to someone new to this. What does this mean? It says, the output will change to agree with the data inputs independently of the count pulses. This feature allows the counters to be used as modulo n dividers by simply modifying the count length with the preset inputs. Does this chip not count from the input value, but instead count by the input value? I don't know if that's what that's suggesting, but if that is what that's suggesting, then that's completely different from these other chips, I think, which have you, you define the starting value. If that's the case, maybe it's bouncing around weirdly because I left the inputs floating. So I guess I will tie all the inputs to low so that it's a zero, zero, zero input and see if it counts correctly. Maybe that, I don't know if, that, if that's right though, because it didn't seem to count up with any kind of real consistency unless I missed it somehow, but I'll just tie them to low anyway, because I guess there's a possibility that's causing problems somehow. Okay. I think the inputs on this first chip are now tied low. So let's see what happens. It did the same weird thing where it delayed. Two, three, nope. It's still skipping stuff. So I don't think that was it. I don't understand why it would be skipping stuff unless somehow this is not a very clean signal, but I don't think that would be the case. I'm gonna try hooking the clock up to this line here, which should essentially just connect it here to the next chip over. Oh, that's interesting. The next chip over counts just fine. Is there simply something wrong with this chip? Okay, I guess I guess a different way to try and confirm this would be to swap the positions of these two chips. So I think I'll just do that because that's easy enough to try. I was going to put this in. This is the chip that was originally on this side and I noticed that this is bent and I don't know if I just now did this. What if that was not connected properly? Let me just straighten it out here. That was the D input, wasn't it? No, that's ground. I don't think the chip would have worked at all if that was not connected properly. This is the one that used to be on the right, so I put it on the left. Okay, and here's the chip that used to be on the left, 
and I'm going to put it on the right. Okay, I've swapped the chips. Now I'll turn it back on. We'll see what happens. Okay, already it's odd. And it's still counting wrong. Wait, it stopped counting entirely. What is going on over there? What in the world? But this chip, when it was here, worked fine. Did something get unplugged? Something is definitely wrong over here, and I'm not sure what it would be. Maybe maybe one of these wires are wrong. I'm going to switch it back. Wait a second. Nope. Okay, you can't see it, but this ground pin is, in fact, folded up. I wonder if... How did it work at all? This seems bad, but this is not... This wasn't like this before. So I'm wondering now, because... This is the same pen, pin that was bent a little on the other chip that I noticed before, but it wasn't bent this badly. I wonder if there's something off about this hole on this uh, breadboard or something causing it to divert when I try to put it in. That's very strange. I don't know. This clearly was not making good contact with ground. I'm going to have to bend this back, and I really hope it doesn't break. Okay, I have carefully bent that pin back. Now I'm going to try to get it in there without destroying this. Okay, as far as I can tell, that pin it's in there now and I don't I don't think it's bent. It's it's weird because it looks a little different. But I think it's just the light. So, okay, let's try turning it on. It's still counting incorrectly and that's that's really weird because this chip is the chip that was over here and I had tested that by moving the clock so that it, it connects here instead, and then the signal should go over here to the input on the other chip. That one counts correctly, unless I'm mistaken. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That counted correctly. Okay, so I have this hooked up now. This should roll over. And it did. Although I'm not sure the timing was quite right. I'm still not sure what's going on on with this ones digit. Oh, look at that. Just touching the... What is going on here? Well, okay, that makes some sense because it's probably floating on that input, on the clock input there. So if I just tie that... No, look at that. It still did it, didn't it? It's still doing it. What the heck is wrong over here? There, there almost has to be something miswired, right? It's possible that it's not good to put this here because I'm essentially, I'm changing this pin and this is supposed to be an output pin, so that could be bad. Um, I should be able to avoid that by just disconnecting this jumper and connecting this directly in here. So at least the second digit still works. But there is something extremely wrong on this side. There's something really wrong over there. I wonder if one of these wires is misconnected. I don't know. I'm going to have to try and figure that out. I may do that off camera, though, because that might take a while. One thing that I kind of want to do is address the fact that these two digits don't change at the right time. I think I'm going to connect the carry signal up to the enable pin and then just connect this same clock source to the clock there. Maybe that will do the trick. Okay, ignoring the fact that this digit is totally wrong. Um, I think they change at the correct time, but actually I think this is how it was earlier uh, when I first hooked it up. Because now, because this is a, an inverted signal, so I honestly think maybe the easiest solution, because I think the digits now are, are in sync when they change, and that's what I want. So maybe if I just threw an inverter in my little bridge here. Since I have a long bridge anyway, I can just tick, stick an inverter right here, you know, and invert the signal and send it over here to this enable pin, and I wonder if that will do what I want it to do. Nope, that doesn't work at all. Hmm. What if I enable that, tie that enable pin to high, and now that the, and then invert the clock? Does that make sense? No, that's not working. Also, very strange. Why did that skip zero? It's going from nine to one. Well, 
I gotta be honest, I'm not actually sure what's going on here. I hooked I hooked my carry my carry signal back up without the inverter and without anything weird here. It's just connected into the clock of this sequence. And I swear I had it hooked up that way earlier in the video, but it seems to me like the carry between these two digits, between the two boards, happens at the right time now, right? As soon as that changes to zero, that increments. And that's that's exactly what should happen. The complete and utter mystery to me right now is why the or why these digits are not correct. And why it seems to carry over after like five pulses and not ten. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. This chip is very much counting by five. I'm not sure what to make of this. It's odd because it seems like it is basically working, except for that first digit. I don't understand that. Well, now that's interesting too, cranking it up so that it goes really fast and it's, it's clearly not, it's not even rolling over. Now this one's doing it. So changing too quickly. If I go really, really slow with it, now this one's still wrong. Well, unfortunately, I don't know what's wrong right now, so I'm going to have to, I'm going to stop right now and, and do some researching and maybe come back to this in a day and see if I can figure out what the heck's going on here. I'm also going to trace through these connections and make sure that they are connected the way I think they should be. I'm really confused why cranking up the speed here on the timer is causing it to possibly get worse, right? The carry is getting missed completely here. So I must, I must be missing something. I don't, I didn't have this problem with the other counter chip. So there's something very different about this particular chip that I'm using on this side versus this one. Because when I cut, you know, when we had this hooked up before, I didn't notice any of that. Um, in fact, I can, you know, I can demo it easy enough. I'll just disconnect that, hook this up here. So now only the left side is counting. And see, it's got no problem. It behaves exactly as expected. And I can maximize the speed and it's clearly carrying and everything's working fine. So whatever's going on here, it has something to do with how these counter chips work or how I have it hooked up. It's gotta be something like that. All right, well, in case I don't figure it out, I guess this might be my outro. So in that case, I guess if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and thumbs up if you liked this, although I did apparently fail miserably here in this case. Um, thanks for watching, bye.